Yeah. I've been in a uh, committee hearing on the uh, implementation of the computer systems around uh, the President's health care bill and, and the challenges that, that we're having setting those up. So I didn't get to hear if, if there's been a sufficient amount of bragging about State Representative B.J. Pack from the great state of Georgia. And my sense is, however much has gone on, it has not uh, been enough. Uh, I'd like to be able to tell you that uh, in the great uh, state of Georgia, uh, in fact, in the great 7th District of Georgia, where the Census Bureau tells me one out of every 50 Korean Americans uh, in this great nation live, uh, I'd like to tell you that we carved out a special Korean American state representative district into which B.J. Pack was elected. Uh, but I'm sad to say that's actually not the case. Uh, B.J. Pack was elected uh, in just a plain old ordinary everyday Georgia district because he's the best daggum leader we have to offer uh, in that uh, part of the world. He's doing an amazing job, uh, and I'm glad you're all the way up here in D.C. Uh, today uh, uh, representing uh, uh, folks on our behalf. That's, that's, it's, it's, for, for those of you who have walls uh, where you've got your arm around your favorite uh, politician and you say, I knew those guys way back when, I recommend you get your picture taken with B.J. Pack while you're here today because one of these days you're going to want to say, I knew B.J. Pack way back, uh, way back when. Uh, you know, we're talking so much about uh, barbecue uh, here. Ambassador, I'll tell you, uh, the Consul General uh, had me over to his home in Atlanta the other day uh, and introduced me to Bebembop. Uh, I, I don't know if you all have seen the instructional video uh, on how to eat uh, bibimbap, but I'll tell you, if I invite you over to my house for barbecue, we're not going to have to show you an instructional video. We're just going to show you how to get your shirt dry cleaned after all the juice drips, uh, drips down. But I got to watch an instructional video on, on how to eat. We had a delightful, uh, a delightful meal. It came with an instructional booklet on, on how to eat uh, properly. And I want to say that's the kind of hospitality folks show uh, down in the great state of Georgia. Again, how, how many Georgians uh, do we have uh, here, in the, here in the room? Man, a lot. i got to tell you, that's light. That's light, and the reason is, and I see one of my staffers with her hand up in the back, we always say we want to hire the best and the brightest Georgians that we can, but the best and the brightest Georgians generally want to stay in Georgia. Uh, they don't want to come to Washington, D.C., and I'd like to believe that's why uh, so many folks are, are uh, moving to, to our part of the world. Uh, let me just ask, how many folks were born uh, here in the United States of America? How many folks were born right, right here in the, in the land of freedom? You know, me, I, I was looking at the younger faces back here, guessing there were going to be more. Uh, but, me too. Me too. And I, and I want to start by celebrating those things that we have in common. You know, so often we get together and we talk about those things that divide us. I want to talk about those things that we have in common. And sadly, can, can I see those hands one more, one more time? One more time. Sadly, those of us who have this in common are really at a great disadvantage. And we're at a great disadvantage because all we've ever known in our life is opportunity. That's all we've ever known. All we've ever known in our life is that we could grow up to be anything that we want to be. All we have ever known is the only thing limiting our success was the power of our ideas and our willingness to work for it. Who's not born in America? See those hands. Those hands represent folks who came here for that thing that we take for granted absolutely every day. Tell you another disadvantage that we have, those of us who are born in, a, born in America. If you and I move to Korea tomorrow, we're not going to be Koreans. i got to be honest with you. If I move to Seoul tomorrow, uh, they're not going to be able to call me a Korean. But here in the land that you and I were born in, all it takes to be an American is the desire to come here and be a part of that dream. To come here willing to take advantage of that opportunity, again, that so many of us uh, take, uh, take for granted. And in our district, the one that BJ and I represent, that opportunity is flourishing. Flourishing. Who is it uh, here? I'm just curious among those uh, 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 folks here. Who is it who's going to be the next, uh, 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 the next Korean American United States representative? or Korean-American United States Senator. Is there someone here who's got that on their to-do list? Come on, somebody does. Right. Who, oh, that's, they, they, I, thank goodness, thank goodness. The first female Korean-American. We're gonna, we're gonna go right down that, uh, right down that road and, and, and the, the dreams start here. What you read about in the newspapers, everything that divides this country, 
And the district that BJ and I represent, which has one of the highest immigrant populations in the nation, celebrates everything that unites this country. Love of family, commitment to education, respect for those who paved the path for you and came before, hard work, the willingness to learn from failures. Those American values, I would tell you, are not replenished by folks who were born here. Those are American values that are replenished by those who come here to be a part of that. There is no future for this country but through immigration. There is no hope for this country, nor has there ever been since 1776, but for creating an environment that people want to come and be a part of. You know, they have what they call the gates test. When you raise the gates to the kingdom, do people want to run in or do they want to run out? What happens when you raise the gates of North Korea? Folks running in or folks running out? What happens when you raise the gates to America? Folks are running in because of what you and your families and your neighbors have done to make this land the, the way that it is. We're never more than one generation from changing America. Any of you young folks here who want a different America, you don't like the way America is today, good news, you can change it. There's nothing magic about America except its people. If the quality of its people change, the quality of this nation changes. Well, which is candidly why I'm such a big fan of, of legal immigration, because we can bring in the best and the brightest minds in the world. You know, if we didn't have the great immigration system that we had, we might all be speaking German or Japanese today. Thank goodness all the persecuted German minds, all those great scientists wanted to come and bring their big brains here. I implore you. Here we have a room that is the board of directors of the United States of America. You sit right here today. Everybody who's come up here to speak at this podium works for you. Direct us. Instruct us. You will only get the quality of service that you demand. The same aggressive work ethic that you bring to everything you do in everyday life, you have to bring to directing those minds in the State House, in the County Commission, and here in Washington, D.C. And if you do, if you do, I got to tell you, I'm sad. I'm 43. So much of my opportunities passed me by. I've taken advantage of all that I could. I look at the younger faces out here, the kinds of experiences you're going to have, the kind of success that you're going to be able to reach out and grab. I'm envious. I'm absolutely envious. But I credit it all to those folks who came before you and paved that path. To those of you who are here today doing the work that so many folks stayed home today to do. I know you're not here on paid vacation. Nobody's up here financing your way. You came because you love this country. You want to see it succeed. Thank you for that. Thank you for doing your job of directing this United States Congress and making sure that we, that we get it right. If there is anything that your state reps, your federal reps, your senators can do to serve you, please come and knock on our door. And if folks don't want to work with you, you need to start shopping for your next United States senator, your next United States uh, congressperson. We exist to serve you. If you're not getting the service you deserve, you need to toss this one crowd out, bring in that next new crowd. I have no doubt it's going to include somebody in this room uh, in it. Thank you very much for being here uh, today. I appreciate uh, what you do. BJ, thanks.